In this question, we have available the joint probability distribution of two random variables, x and y, actually two different joint distributions. And uh, we are now being asked to use these to find marginal distributions of x and y, so for both cases. So this yellow one here, yeah, that's the joint distribution. If we want the marginal distribution, we're really only interested in what's the probability for the outcomes of y in one instance, and that's easy. We just add up all the probabilities in the respective joint probability column. And then a second marginal probability we want for x. To obtain this, we will add up all the joint probabilities inside one row, and we get this or one or eight and or one as the probabilities for negative one, zero, and one. And then we do the same for the second joint distribution. We'll obtain one marginal distribution for y and one for x. So what we can say here is that the probability, for instance, for x being equal to 1 is 0 0.2, given that second joint distribution. So second part asks us to check whether x and y are independent. So this is basically we need to put the marginal and the joint probabilities in relation. What you need to know here is that if x and y are independent, then it is true, but only then, that the probability that y takes a particular value and x takes a particular value, that joint probability can then be calculated as the product of the two respective marginal probabilities. Okay, But that's only true if there's independence and for all, if that is so, then it should be true for all combinations of x and y. Here, for instance, we have nine different combinations of x and y. So what we now need to do is we'll just draw another table of the, with the same structure and same outcomes for y and x. And in this table, we calculate the product of the respective marginal probabilities to see whether that result is then the same as the joint probabilities given in the tables we were being provided in the question. So the first one, the marginal probability of x being y being equal to negative 1 is 0 0.2 times the marginal probability of x being negative 1 or 0.1, that gives 0 0.02. Okay. Now we can already see that these probabilities are not the same. Okay, so in a way we can already conclude that for that first distribution x and y are not independent because the result should really have been the same if they were independent. But let's continue on, let's complete the table. 0 0.1 times 0 0.4 is the product of the marginal distributions for x negative 1 and y 0. Then for x negative 1 and y 1 we get 0 0.04 and so forth. We can complete this table and of course you need to make sure that you understand where all these values come from. They're always the product of the respective marginal probabilities. Now you can see that all of these are slightly different to the ones which you observe. So the answer here is that for distribution 1 x and y are not independent. We'll do the same exercise for distribution 2. So we'll again produce a table with the product of the respective marginal probabilities. So let's start on the bottom right corner here. Marginal probability of y equals 1 and x equals 1. 0.2 times 0.4 is 0.08. Then 0.4 times 0.6 is 0.24. And we can already see that these two results coincide with the joint probabilities given. So let's complete the rest of the table to see whether that's true for all combinations of x and y. And indeed, that is the case. So here, the conclusion is that indeed x and y are independent.